Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome back to the Bowers Tribe Facebook Friends Tour. We're here out in Draper today in the Draper Lotus. The other day I was in the Ogden Lotus, so it's getting kind of interesting. I have a lot better lighting today. We have high-end lighting, and we have these amazing, this amazing crystal skull and angel behind us representing uh, the energies today, so it's fun. It's my pleasure to be sitting here with uh, the infamous, infamous Crystal here in the community, amazing person, um, talking a little bit with her, discovering she grew up an Egyptian goddess, literally in that part of the geographic of the world. And so it's, it's really fun to get to know and, and hear a little bit more personable stuff. We'll be posting the link of uh, her information below this video if you want to learn more about um, her on the professional level. This is interview number 21. We were joking about that a little bit. I'm 21. Yeah, she's 21. <laughs> I'm legal now. On the Bower Stripes tour. <laughs> so, Crystal, you talked to you have this gifts and you have all you've had this stuff for quite a while, most of your life, and you've been aware of it. But there's been times in your life to where you chose to be activated with it, and be aware, and really active building it and kind of like, as you said, uh, working out your, your intuitive muscles and getting that strong, strengthened. But there's been times in your life where you shut that down and you didn't want anything to do with it based on circumstances. Can you talk a little bit about your different experiences between when you were really strong with that, in, that ability and then, other, and then the difference when, when you didn't want anything to do with it? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. This is a blast. I am loving that you're doing this. Um, I love seeing everybody else's interviews and learning who is in our community and it reminds me of the Sesame Street song, who are the people in your neighborhood? And I feel like I'm one of the people in the neighborhood. So that's awesome. So yeah, I, um, uh, one of my favorite things to talk about is intuitive gifts because I think everybody has them to a degree and I do liken them onto the muscles in your body. If you were to go to the gym and work out, you would get these big muscles. Mm -hmm. But if you don't go to the gym and work out, it's not like you don't have muscles, it just means that they haven't been strengthened. Mm -hmm. um, just like somebody who was obsessed and went to the, the gym to work out their muscles, I feel like I kind of got obsessed over intuitive abilities. Um, as a child, I was very aware, as you mentioned, that uh, I was very psychic and I was seeing things and hearing things. And um, like I was saying, I remember being eight or nine years old and realizing that not everybody was having the same experiences as I was. And for some reason, uh, I was okay with that. I think a lot of us um, that are light workers or intuitive by nature, uh, a lot of us shut that down and we're like, I don't want to be different. I was okay with it. Um, uh, my family would call me, oh, you're telling stories. You know, they wouldn't believe like everything that I was saying. And I still kind of was like, well, okay, you don't see him and I do. I just kind of considered myself very special. <laughs> um, when I was 13, I went through a really hard time in my life when um, I was living in the Middle East mm -hmm. and my, we had to quickly be evacuated when Desert Storm broke out. And my parents made the decision to leave me here in America and they went back to the Middle East. And I, so I went through a lot of abandonment and that's what actually shut down my, um, or I, I chose to um, kind of shut down that connection to the angels and my intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you ask, you know, what, what would the difference be for me? I was shut down because of anger yeah. uh, and, and a feeling of abandonment and, and fear. And uh, I think that those things, we stop trusting life and we stop trusting our intuitive abilities. We start trusting God and so we, we shut those things down. And that obviously was a really dark time in my life. I wasn't getting a lot of insight. I wasn't getting a lot of clarity, which propelled more you know, anger. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a very big awakening when I gave birth to my first son at the age of 18. Um, we, it's like I locked eyes with him and I woke back up. And so I have a lot of compassion for people who have shut down those abilities. And I understand the journey that you go through to get intuitively buff again mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's been a, a big you know a, a big uh, passion of mine is to help people do that that's so cool now has there been any experiences with your abilities and awareness like seeing things is there one any one moment of time that sticks out to you that was really impactful other than obviously the birth of your children and stuff like that. Right, right. But anything that actually, oh, I had this experience and I was like, whoa, I'm never gonna forget that. It was like crazy, amazing. Like all the time. 
<laughs> Any specific? Yeah, I, 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 I have mystical experiences. Um, I can't deny that. Um, and they are all amazing. Um, I will say this when, when you were asking the question, I actually mm -hmm. thought you were going to ask, have I ever had a negative experience? And I, that's mm -hmm. most people's fear, I think, when they are wanting to, uh, you know, buff up their intuitive centers or, yeah. you know, start to increase their capacity to be intuitive is they're afraid of what they're going to see, mm -hmm. they're afraid of what they're going to, what the message is. And all I can say is that anything that you've seen in Hollywood, your greatest fears, th those don't exist, at least in the realm that I would train somebody to be tuned into. Um, everything is amazing. Everything is miraculous. Every and you, you really can have a very magical life of seeing um, the truth about things um, beyond the veil. Um, yeah, I, w I, I don't even know what to even say because it's yeah, all amazing. It's I had an amazing time last night. I had birds in my house <laughs> <laughs> randomly, <laughs> and of course I'm going to get like this mystical message you know, from that experience. So um, I think you put meaning on ed on everything. Mm -hmm. And so when you are in the middle of having a mystical experience, you can say, oh, this is this could happen to anyone. Or you could say, actually, it's happening to me. Yeah. And I think it's very amazing. So what would you say? Because I know you do uh, mentoring and different things like that with your work. So, so let's say somebody is watching this. They don't know you ever, and they don't know anything about you. and. What would you say, but they're experiencing potentials of what you grew up with and they're like, they're new to it and, and what would you say to that person that doesn't know anything about you and maybe assist them with, what would you, how would you guide somebody with moving forward with learning more about themselves with these abilities? You know, the best place to start if you feel like you are an intuitive person who just needs some guidance, you know, and how to what, what to do with those tools. I always start with helping people clear their energy first because I feel like uh, most people in that category are empathic, mm -hmm. and you tend to feel everything around you, and you are sensing on different levels what's going on. And if you don't know what that means, you, you know, you start to do things to shut that down, whether that be drinking alcohol or mm -hmm. engaging in certain things to shut it down. Um, if you can learn how to clear your energy effectively on a daily basis, that really helps because you're not going to be so bombarded by all of these frequencies coming at you from other people and from the world. Um, empaths and psychic people who haven't been really guided to use those abilities, uh, they usually experience a lot of pain because they don't, they don't understand that their feelings are not necessarily theirs. Yeah. And so, you know, I call it like the light worker freak out when they're just like, I I'm feeling the entire world on me. Yeah. And I don't know what to do. It's like when a child has a fit, like in the grocery store or yeah. something, usually the reason why a child is having a meltdown is because they are feeling adult sized emotions and okay. energy. And that is like the only way to release that. And so you as an adult, you probably did that as a child. And so mm -hmm. that is like your coping skill. Like I need to have a complete meltdown in order to feel clear again. But if you can learn how to clear your energy, you know, utilize tools like, you know, saging yourself. I mean, we're here at Lotus. There's a <laughs> thousand and one tools here <laughs> how to like clear yourself. If you're looking for sage. Sage, sea salt, Himalayan salt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> and if you're watching this and you know Chris, you probably know some ways to clear yourself. Um, and, and if you want to know more ways, you know, that's what I would be looking into is, is how to clear your energy so that you can like only be working with your own energy and your own messages because you might be getting messages for other people and you're very confused and you're very burdened and bogged down and and then like i said you start into some unhealthy patterns and some things to help deal with that yeah clearing your energy and learning effectively like really how to do it is <clears throat> is absolutely my very first step for anybody that's going through that if you're going through the dark night of the soul, if you feel like you are going crazy, <laughs> clear yourself and you're going to feel better. So that's a good place to start. I've had that same experience where, um, like you're talking about the, the little kid in the grocery store and that all the energy is going through them. I've had that same experience with animals, like dogs as, as well. Like if they're stressful going on, they're really tapping into that same energy. So I totally get that. In, in all levels of all beings around us on this planet. Mm -hmm. has, there any, has there been any times where, as you were cultivating and, and creating and strengthening your abilities, did, was there, or is there still currently any times where it's confusing and you're trying to distinguish what is natural intuition versus something else's energies? 
Yeah, and I think if you are ever talking to an intuitive and they say that they're 100% on, get the fuck away from them. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> we made a deal that I could be the first one to say the fuck word. In <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom, there it was. Um, yeah, get away from them because I feel like uh, we are human beings. I mean, even if... Even somebody who's gone to the gym and, you know, strengthen their muscles, they yeah. may not be able to lift an entire truck, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, yes, I think for me, especially when it comes to my own personal life, I still get readings. Um, I feel like there are, um, you know, I still have my own desires that get in the way, my own wishful thinking, my own mm -hmm. hopes that even if I were to, you know, do cards or something, I mean, you can read things, you can twist things around. I think that knowing that about yourself is good and being willing to go get somebody else to read your energy or to help you an outsider looking in is a really good thing. Um, and then I think just that awareness that, hey, I don't know all the answers. Yeah. The I don't knows are, um, it's a phrase that puts you into a very humble position and it creates a space where spirit can teach you. And I'm always wanting to be taught in the moment and so I'm willing to say, I, I actually don't know. Let's look into this. Let's see what spirit has to say about it. And that kind of puts you, that gets you out of that, I have to know all the time, and then you make yeah. up stories, and Absolutely. then it's wrong, and then, yeah. That's good, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're able to be aware through everything you went through, to have that humbleness, humbleness that we, you know, we don't know everything, and that, that's a sign of a really good teacher when we can say, and honestly speak the truth in that moment of time and, and maybe a sister guy is somebody who maybe to other people who maybe do know what they're looking for and yeah. so forth. Yeah, networking is huge. I think I, I have a medical degree and I remember going through the medical field and going, we're never gonna have the end of the answers of the body. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always, uh, you're gonna learn something new. There's always something that's changing, growing. We're in an ever expanding universe. And so you, I think the ability to just say, um, I don't know, but I might know somebody who does know, or I don't know, but let's check it out together, or let's look into it together. I think that that's honoring the ever-expanding universe and the ever-expanding consciousness, and the fact that you know your answer might be different <laughs> this year than it was back in 2005 or something. Oh, you know, my, my answers so, are totally different than yeah. 10 years ago, or even. And thank goodness <laughs> we don't want you to be where you were 10 years ago. We we I met her and we hung out in, in Sedona, Arizona, almost seven years ago, and. We're totally different people from seven years ago. It's so true. So true. <laughs> I will always remember being able to drum next to you because I'm not that great of a drummer, and he is amazing. And um, yeah, I just I I was so honored to to do that with you. So well, it's all that fun. This is my current funness with the, the public, and thank you so much for watching, and thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. She drove all the way. And she doesn't, she's not located in Salt Lake, she drove a little ways to, to meet me here, so I appreciate that. Totally worth it. So Crystal, would it be safe to say that we are friends in real life and not just on Facebook? Yes, yes, yes. I should say that's a fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes, that is safe to say. Thank you for being my friend, Chris. Absolutely, thank you so much for connecting and all the experiences you've shared with not only me, but the community out there. If you want to learn more, take a look at the link below and you have a great rest of the day.